Hey, it's Mike from Maker Moose. Thanks so much for joining me. Um, sorry this has taken a little longer than I expected. I've been very sick. You can probably still hear it in my voice. I'm still a little sick, but I thought I really need to get this uh, part five video done. Part four, I couldn't voice over and I had to speed it up quite a bit just because I couldn't speak at all. I had completely lost my voice. Um, so now I'm feeling a little better. <laughs> I thought um, I'd do a bonus part five um, about uh, my Make All the Cards series. And um, in it, I'm going to make some more Christmas cards, holiday cards. And I'm going to be using specialty equipment. So for this first one, I'm going to be using my Better Press. Um, I do have a few... Sorry, I do have a few holiday plates here. Um, this one here is the Christmas greetings. Oh, here's another one. This is Joya Noel. Um, so this is a, a bird and a nice Joya Noel, um, sentiment there. So I may be mistaken. The only other thing I found in my to be sorted pile is these fancy sentiment strips. Um, this does have a Merry Christmas here. That's the only kind of um, Christmassy one there. But this is a, um, a letterpress, a better press plate. And then it's got a coordinating die that cuts out them like banners. So I'm going to work with these uh, three. And I did pick up um, some of the colors. I had the black already. This one comes with the black. Um, but I really liked, I used this bark and mulberry for some autumn cards. Um, and I'm going to be doing a workshop with these. So I thought, um, I'd like to have a few different colors. So I'm going to get everything set up and we'll start doing some, um, plates. I'm going to do the first one in real time. I'm going to be doing a few of each. Uh, once you have it set up, it is such a fast thing. I'll, I might even do three in real time um, <laughs> with the same plate just to show you how fast this is. Um, it's really fun to use. If you've never used it before, if you're on the fence, um, I recommend first checking to see if there's any um, better press plates that you like. If you like the designs, great. I'd say go right for it. Um, but if the designs aren't for you, you might want to wait until there are more. But they've been putting out so many. Spellbinders has done such a great job. Um, it's I've, I've had to try and control myself with <laughs> which ones I buy. And they did have some beautiful... Um, they have a monthly, car, uh, monthly kit as well. Um, that because I live in Canada, um, the shipping's a little pricey. I only order directly from Spellbinders a couple times a year. Um, but I would, if I was in the U.S., I would definitely have their monthly kit. Um, they've got some exclusive ones that are just gorgeous. So um, I'll be back in a few minutes. I'll get some paper out and my uh, Platinum 6, and we'll get to it. All right, so I've got um, my three plates here, my better press. I'm going to get right to that. I have been having uh, my craft tape rip it, uh, rip the paper a little bit. Um, so I've been trying to de-stick it a bit just by putting it on my shirt a couple times. I'm gonna start with this one here. Um, I think it's a cardinal, I'm not sure. Um, this one here, there is a die to cut out the sentiment, but I don't think I'll be using that. So, I think I want this a little higher up than I think the inspiration. So I'm doing this as a flat card. They have this one popped up in the inspiration. But um, I think a flat card will work just fine for me. I have the cotton card panels in bisque. I haven't tried using any other paper uh, with this yet. I've heard some people gain um, good success with like watercolor paper, but I've just been using um, the paper that they recommend.
I was doing a a little loop and um, keeping it down like that but like I said I've been having it rip a little bit so I'm just going to very carefully the smallest amount I possibly need <laughs> to have taped to there okay this one I'm going to do all in black so um, I'm probably going to watercolor this a little bit, but um, you don't need to. It's still a beautiful card just with the letterpress image. Move these out of the way. There we have that beautiful card. So quick and easy. Absolutely loving this. This is one of my favorite purchases I've made this year. Uh, one of the larger ones for sure. I actually bought the Platinum 6 and the Better Press. I wasn't having good results with my Glimmer Hot Foil um, with my die machine. I think it's just too wide. Um, I would kind of have to put it in both, uh, both sides to get good results. And I want something a little smaller that I can do on this desk anyways, because my, um, my die cut machine is on a table on the other side. Uh, so I'm going to do another one in black here. I'm just going to re-ink that. I just absolutely love how once you've got your your image set up um, however you want it on here um, it's just so quick to go again and again I've just got the bare minimum holding that on but I've been having really good results with that Look at that. So, um, you can see how quickly you can make cards with this system. I think I'm, I'll do one more of the same one and then we'll switch. I haven't been cleaning this too, too well. I was using some, um, my stamp cleaner, the one I used from Hero Arts. And, um, but I'm not gonna worry about it too much. It's one of those things I try and keep everything as clean as possible until it's uh, until it doesn't look great and then I'm like give up. <laughs> For this one here, again, I'm just sticking with uh, very similar to the inspiration for the layout. Actually, identical. <laughs> um, but this one, I'm going to try something a little different. 
I'm going to take the bark here. I'm just going to see if I can avoid the bird. Anywhere they've got on the bird, I'm just gonna wipe off a little bit. And I think I can go in with the French blue. I don't know how this is gonna end up, but we'll we'll give it a shot here. That did flop off a little bit. Um, so you can see the bird is depressed there. Uh, I'm going to watercolor that, but I want it to leave it kind of blank. Um, I didn't get as close as I would like to with that bark, but that's okay. I can do that um, coloring in. So uh, I'm going to have a subtle brown here, this nice vibrant blue, and I'm going to probably color this uh, what I believe is a cardinal uh, red. And there's my third one. So again, I'll watercolor that bird. I'm going to clean this up and I'll be right back. So, I think I'm going to get back to my letterpress cards here. Not sure if I want to leave these ones as is or if I want to paint them. But I definitely want to watercolor these ones. All right. So, I believe this is a cardinal. I'm going to go in with, I think, bee sting. I'm just going to wet the paper first here. I think I'm just going to paint the whole thing red and then go in with some black accents. All right, so I've got my um, Glimmer uh, platform here. Um, it's already plugged in, warming up. I've got my Platinum 6. Um, I've got some Nina Classic Crest cardstock here as card fronts. I really recommend um, smooth cardstock. Um, whatever you would ink blend on, um, I've been able to get really good results. So these were for some birthday cards that I made. Last week, um, I used the foil. This was a pink fresh set. And then the reverse foil here, um, I, um, I just put on a piece of cardstock and I've never gotten such good results um, until I started using... The, the reason I use my ink blending stuff is because I was using a stencil with, with the, this foil set. And I actually found um, that I finally got, like normally when I would do, take the scrap piece of foil and apply it to a flat plate or, um, um, yeah, just a plain plate, um, I would get a lot more white spots than I did on here. Um, so I was really, really impressed with that. So I'm going to be using my cardstock, my smooth cardstock from now on. 
So I bought, uh, I brought out um, three different um, sets. They're actually all Hero Arts. Um, I don't know why. I just decided um, these are the ones that I wanted. Um, this is actually the very first hot foil plate I ever bought, and you can actually see uh, I actually foiled the plate <laughs> um, my first go because I had the the foil the wrong way, but that's okay. Um, so I really like this Happy Holidays um, foil set. I've not used it before. It's on there good. Um, but it, it comes with a die so you can um, pop it up in the center of a card. I thought this would make a very nice statement card if I can get the tape off. I'm going to get the die off first before I bend it. That is on there good. There we go. Alright, so... I am going to see if I can get this... Ooh. This is so close to the size of a card front um, that I have to be pretty exact. So I'm actually going to um, cut a different size panel for that so I don't have to be um, so exact. Um, so I'll actually use some of my Bristol Smooth um, this is 9 by 12, so I will actually cut it at 6 instead of 5.5, and, and that will give me a little extra play there. And I know I'm... this is way too big, but I'm hoping to get an extra card front out of that. We'll see. All right. So I'm just going to remove this here. Now, I've had... Uh, I've had good luck with the way I've been doing this lately, so I'm just going to continue doing that. I just go in nice and slow. I actually usually go about three times. There's a second. And then a third. Okay. There we go. It looks like I need a little bit of a shim there. That's not too bad, but there is a little bit of foiling left there. So I did feel like it was going very um, easily through my machine. So last time I was doing this, I did add... Do I still have it around here? I had a little um, piece of scrap cardstock shim. This is very hot, so just careful when you're... Moving these. And so there's my, my flat one. I don't know what else to call it. <laughs> Um, and I'm going to see if I can find that piece of cardstock. There it is on the... F no, that's the scrap I cut off, but that's okay. I'll just cut another one off of here. So... 
So, um, yeah, this is the um, just a piece of scrap card stock that I put between the thin shim and the spacer pad there. And once that platform is ready, I'm going to put this back on. And we'll take one of those smooth, Nina smooth cardstocks. That's the other thing. It could be the cardstock that I used. Like I said, I had really good luck with this Nina. So I'm going to see if I can get this as a card front. See how that looks. That is gorgeous. Look at that. Oh my gosh. So yeah, smooth cardstock and a shim. Look, almost no foil left on that. That is that is phenomenal. That is really really good compared to results I've had. I haven't been foiling for a while because I've been having. Um, some issues, like I said, um, I got this machine specifically to foil, and um, it's obviously doing its thing, so that's great. Um, I know you can get great uh, results with the Glimmer with any any machine that is compatible. Um, you just have to experiment with your machine. All right, so I've got that Hero Arts um, snow wreath here, and I've got some of the this iridescent. Um, I'm not sure if this one's called Aura, but um, I've got a couple of these iridescent ones here, and I really like this one. All right, I've got this um, Craft Smart um, paper pad I bought. I think it was from um, Michael's. I bought a bunch of them on clearance a few years ago. Um, I think I took one out of, of every sheet out, or at least every sheet that I liked. Um, I'm just gonna cut these into um, card fronts, so. For these geometric ones, I might wait before I cut them in case I want to get them centered. So, yeah, lots of uh, lots of card fronts there. Um, four out of each um, 12 by 12. Plus, I've got lots of leftover strips for other uses. So, um, there's just a sampling of some of the the patterns. So even if you don't plan on using something, if you know that you like it, like anything with, I did get this before I had a foiling machine, but I don't think um, I would be able to get plates like this, um, especially with like repeating patterns like this. Um, I love that Merry Christmas over and over and over again. Um, and obviously the quality of foiling is probably better than anything I could achieve at home because it is... It is done professionally, um, and I'm, yeah, I, um, 
I really like these. And like I said, these ones I'm going to save before I cut them down because um, I might want them um, this pattern three wide or I might want it centered. Um, I'll wait before I cut those ones down. And this one here, I might actually just cut into strips to use as strips as well. So um, we will see. I like that. Tis the season there and happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Um, they are a little wider. I could make these in using a landscape card um, because they are wider than a five and a half. Actually, that is, or sorry, yeah, uh, four and a quarter. Um, so yeah, I could get these on a five and a half uh, landscape or a five by seven. I don't do a lot of five by seven cards, um, but I might use, depending on how they work out, I might use some of that. Um, one thing I didn't notice, which is kind of fun, is these patterns play into that as well. And this is the reverse of that. So anyways, can have fun with that. I will get making some cards here and I'll see you in a bit. Hey, so I've got some cards here. Um, <clears throat> I'm sorry, I'm still a little sick, um, but I thought I'd go over um, the letterpress cards that I did here. So. Um, these ones I letter pressed in two different colors. I think it was bark and French blue or something like that. And then with the bird, I watercolored that. Um, you can see, uh, I got, uh, varying results. Um, I think this one's my favorite. It's the subtlest. I was trying to add more color in there, but, um, I do really like these um, letterpress cards. I don't have anything on um, actual card bases right now because I'm out of the cardstock I use for that. So <laughs> um, once I get cardstock for all these, I think we're over in this series 100 Christmas cards. Um, it's crazy. It's um, I made way too many. <laughs> um, but I just wanted to show you how quickly you can make cards and they don't all have to be duplicates these ones i just left uh basic just um i did this in the black ink um the letter press better press black i think it's called so then we have some of the foiled sentiments that i have um i did uh cut up a lot of that um foiled paper from craft smart so i took one of each of these pages so 12 pages total and um, cut them into different things. Um, and these ones are a little um, short, uh, slimmer than a, a standard card. Um, I just thought it looked better that way, um, just for um, the way it laid out. This is a standard card base, and it's just a little too wide. Um, I could cut that down, but I thought, no, I like the snowflakes, I'll leave that one. Um, so there's four. This one's actually an overfoiled one. I do have a couple more overfoiled ones to use. Um, but so this is the what you expect to get. And this was from the waste foil of this one. So these two um, I got from one piece of foil. And you remember these poinsettias uh, from my first video. Um, I really like them on this gold cardstock that I just added a little bit of uh, tumbled glass, distress oxide. Um, this one here I absolutely love. I switched out the um, gold for the red petals. I just wish I hadn't done it on that gold um, cardstock. It's a little too shiny. I would have liked to go something a little more plain on that. Um, it's just there's so much gold on that card, but that's okay. Um, these ones turned out great. Uh, more subtle because of the different color. This one, um, one of the cards I had um, done with a Silly Santa, I had cut a piece of this paper just like that. So I cut another strip from it and then a couple uh, waste pa pieces of gold stripe there. Um, just for a really simple card, I could add a sentiment here. I'm not sure if I will. Um, this one was already done. Um, this was one of the card fronts from the paper. Um, I just added a little bit of that tumble glass and then some uh, gems around the side. This one, again, um, this is just two pieces of that um, cardstock popped up very easy. Same thing here, just added some gems. Uh, same here, I added some sequins. 
Um, I was uh, looking for a stamp that says, like, from our family to yours or something like that um, that would fit in there. I haven't found it yet, but I will. I like this one a lot. Um, the Believe really pops up. Uh, this, I did a simple shaker um, card with uh, the Hero Arts. Um, I forget what it was called. Snow Wreath or something. I still have the plate out here. Um, this plate. <laughs> uh, so I made a simple shaper, shaker. I just cut out two. Uh, I cut out a circle and then another circle and then added some sequins inside. And then I found a stamp... Um, so that says Winter Wonder, and I did that in uh, white embossing powder. Again, that was just a standard card. I don't even think I need to do anything. And this is actually one of my favorites. Tis the season. Very simple on a matte, um, I think it's called satin um, metallic card stock. Um, but yeah, so there's um, quite a few cards. Uh, I've got a stack here, and again, these aren't even on bases yet, um, but I have... Uh, yeah, I think it, I lost count around 90. I just gave up. Um, and um, just to add to that, I still have... So these are some of those foil cardstock um, bases. Um, I might... Or um, um, fronts. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to put anything on here. Maybe something in the middle, but I love these ones. But I still have all of those other ones that I made. Um, actually, some of those are from an older video, um, but these ones here are all from um, this video series. So I still have so many card fronts. So um, yeah, please, when you're, if you're looking to get a head start, now is a great time. But even if you're one weekend away from having to send the, your cards out, you can do so many. Um, you don't have to go too crazy something simple like this beautiful even if it wasn't popped up um that's a beautiful card right there um but i do love and i'm just gonna bring some of them back here i think this one this one and that's the one that i had that other piece from i love the silly santa ones you're on the naughty list I love this simplicity of that one. Um, I've already actually sent some of them away. Um, this one's nice too. I love the, the Silly Santas and this die cut. Those didn't take long to do and they were just so... Um, what, a, what a statement they make. And then if you have cover plates like this Oh What Fun, um, that's a great one. Uh, this one, um, I absolutely love this one. I did have a problem with the, uh, the embossing there. It, I just chose too fine of a stamp, um, for that. But this one with the, um, solar paste on it is just phenomenal. Um, but yeah, so I, I, I love these ones with Santa's. I, I've always, like, I used this one so much last year. This one I'm going to use so much this year. Um, and, uh. Yeah, so please um, don't think that it's uh, too late to start your cards. Uh, even if it's like, just remember, uh, mailing mailing is what takes the longest. But if you're hand delivering them, um, all good. But I have a massive stack here um, to go through and choose what I want to send out. Um, and again, most of them are pretty unique. There's only a few that I've repeated Um and mostly just the better press ones, I think. Um, so find the stamps that are easy um, if you're in a pinch. Um, if you've already got some die cuts made up, um, that also makes it very easy. Like this is just um, card front, matte, and then a die cut. Uh, how easy is that? You can add a sentiment to that to make it more, make it more unique. But please don't don't ever think that it's too late this year. Oh, I'll get started on them next year early. <laughs> uh, we always tell ourselves that, and we never, never do. So there's no better time but the present. Um, speaking of the present, I will um, be my next video. I am so, so excited that I have 
these Lawn Fawn stamps to play with. I'm very, very excited. Um, so this is going to be a part of my next video. I do also have three new colors of Distress Oxide for myself. They're not new. <laughs> They're new to me. Um, so Festive Berries, Salty Ocean, and Squeeze Lemonade. So I'm going to be doing um, some fun, um, non-traditional um, color blends with these. The Festive Berries is obviously very festive. Um, but I'm going to throw these two in and see what comes of that. And I can't wait to show you what I make with these two stamp sets. Um, so please stay tuned for the next video. Um, <clears throat> now that I'm starting to feel better, I'm a little less congested. Um, I'm hoping to be able to return to doing videos and voiceovers um, very, very soon. So uh, we'll see you in the next one. Thanks so much for um, hanging out for this um, five-part series. Thanks so much for watching. Please like and subscribe, and we'll see you soon.